Hi, my name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesia resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to quickly and safely draw medications into syringes and explaining why it is such a crucial skill for anesthesiologists to have, particularly in emergency situations. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. Let's dive in. One way that anesthesiology is commonly characterized is that it's 95% boredom and 5% sheer terror. And that 5% refers to emergency situations that can unfold very quickly in the operating room that necessitate immediate workup of what's going wrong and treatment so that the patient can make it safely through surgery. Anesthesiology is actually one of very few medical specialties where doctors are directly drawing up medications and administering them to patients. So doing this skill isn't something that's taught widely outside of anesthesiology, nor is it really taught in medical school. In addition to being able to draw up drugs quickly in emergency situations, it's also just useful to be able to draw up drugs quickly on a regular basis. Because it's not unreasonable to think that I might be drawing up drugs maybe a hundred times in a day, and if I'm working five or six days a week, that's 500 or 600 times that I'm drawing up medications in a week. So if I can do this quickly, I'm gonna save myself quite a bit of time while I'm in the operating room. And while speed is important, safety is even more important for a number of reasons. The first is that it's actually easier than you'd think to make a medication error where you would say, draw up the wrong drug or the wrong dose of medication. So being able to draw up drugs safely can help avoid medication errors. And as you can imagine, since you're using a needle to draw up medications, there's always a risk of causing an inadvertent needle stick either to yourself, the patient, or someone else who's in the operating room. And keep in mind that a lot of the drugs that we're using commonly in anesthesiology include paralytics and other drugs that can cause really serious problems if accidentally administered. For all those reasons, it's really important to be able to safely and quickly draw up medications into syringes, which I'll get into step by step right now. And if you wait around to the very end, I'll show you a way to make this a little bit more fun while you're at it. The very first thing you need to do before you start handling any medications or anything involved with patient care is wash your hands and grab a pair of gloves. Next, grab an appropriately sized syringe for the medication you're going to draw up and also a blunt tip needle to draw the medication into the syringe. Next, get the actual medication that you're gonna draw up. In this case, we're gonna be using succinylcholine, which is a paralytic that comes in a 10 cc vial. So I grabbed a 10 cc syringe. I will point out, and especially because it's been in the news recently, that paralyzing agents do have warnings on top of the vials that indicate that they are paralyzing agents, and they look just like this. Next, connect your syringe to the blunt tip needle. You can either do this very slowly and painstakingly where you try to find the crease in between the two layers, peel it back, and then do the same thing with your blunt tip needle. Where's that crease? Oh, uh, right there, okay. And then you can connect them like this. That took me about 15 seconds to do. Alternatively, you can pop open the packaging on your syringe, pop open the packaging on your needle, connect them like this, and now you've got them connected. An extremely important next step is to take your syringe and label it with the medication that you intend to draw into it. This step goes way further than you'd think for preventing medication errors. You'll also notice that medications are grouped by color, where red is for paralytics, blue is for opioids, purple slash purpley white is for pressors, and so forth. Now that I've got my vial of medication, and I've also got my labeled syringe, I'm going to do my first of three safety checks where I'm going to compare both the medication name and the concentration on the vial and the syringe to make sure that they're exactly the same, which in this case is succinylcholine chloride, 20 milligrams per ml. Same, same. Next, open your medication vial, which you can either do slowly and painstakingly by ah, popping it off like that, or if you wanna look cool, even though nobody sees you behind the blue drapes and your patient who's back there with you is asleep, you can just pop the top off like that. Just make sure you either have good enough aim to get the top into the garbage can, or if you get it on the floor, clean up after yourself after you do that, because leaving things on the floor is not cool. Next, uncap your blunt tip needle, which I like to do by taking the cap in between my ring finger and my pinky, just like that. 
Next, I flip my medication vial upside down like this, where I'm able to very safely put my syringe on my palm and aim it at the medication vial in a controlled fashion. At this point, I also draw back on my syringe to fill it about halfway with air so that I can push this air into the vial so that there's a little bit of back pressure to push medication from the vial into the syringe. This is also where I perform my second of three safety checks where I again check the name of the medication in the syringe in my hand and also the name of the medication in my vial. Now in a very controlled fashion, I can put the syringe inside of the vial and this is where I inject air that looks just like this. The medication vial is now pressurized, so when I let go of the syringe, it actually fills up partway by itself. As you can see, without me doing any work, there's already about five cc's of medication that's been drawn up into the syringe. And then I can go ahead and just draw back on the plunger to fill up the rest of the syringe. It's important to try to avoid getting air into the syringe, but you can always get air out of the syringe once you're done drawing up the medication. Once I've completely drawn up the medication into the syringe, I will do my third safety check by taking the vial off of the needle, again putting my vial side by side with the syringe, and double checking succinylcholine, succinylcholine. I know that it's really redundant to do that three times, but it's extremely important to set a habit of being very safe in drawing up your medication, triple checking everything, and just making that your standard of practice so that you can dramatically reduce the likelihood of a medication error. The last thing that you'll need to do at this point is safely protect this needle tip that you have exposed. Perhaps the safest way to do that is the one-handed scoop technique where you take your cap like this, set it down on a flat surface, and then take your syringe and scoop up the needle tip just like this, which allows you to then cap like that. I will point out that that's not necessarily the fastest way to do it, but it's probably the safest, particularly compared to taking the needle cap in your hand and then placing the needle back into it, where it's much easier in a situation like that to accidentally poke yourself with the needle. And you can imagine that poking yourself with a paralytic like this is probably not a recipe for success in the operating room. Just to show you what it looks like all put together, imagine we're in a situation where there's a cardiac arrest out of nowhere and I quickly have to come to the medication cart and draw up code dose epinephrine. So we can do that really quickly and safely using the techniques that I just showed you right now. Start by grabbing my syringe, a blunt tip needle, open them both, get them connected just like this. Medication label, one cc vial of epinephrine, double check, double check, pop everything open, a little bit of air in here, draw it up safely like this, and double check, double check, medications ready to go, air is out, and I can give it. The thing that I mentioned that can be fun is if you set up a little target over your garbage can and throughout the course of your day, see if you can get your target practice by popping the tops of your vials. And like I said, you really should clean up after yourself if you're gonna do anything like this. If you'd like to learn more about the medications shown in the anesthesia cart behind me right here, check out this video that I made where I go through all of the medications in the anesthesia cart with the help of Dr. Erica Fagelman. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. See you next time.